Hey guys, sorry I have been out of the loop for so long, um, but I'm going to be trying to make videos again on a daily basis once more. Uh, but you know how it is, just things get on top of you, I guess. So, today I am going to start with a particularly interesting quandary which I've been thinking over recently. Is IRC, Internet Relay Chat, a social network? And the second part of this video is going to cover why it is the best social network. So as you can see from part two, uh, I've kind of personally already decided, but it is a bit of a discussion I would like to have with you guys as well. So get your fingers poised over the keys and hovering over that comment section. So what is IRC to begin with? For those of you who are unenlightened, it stands for Internet Relay Chat. It's been around, believe it or not, since 1988. It's a very, very, very old platform for communication. Um, it is effectively uh, what you might call a chat room, uh, but it is the sort of the standardized protocol for a, a chat room. It's used by a lot more companies and services than you might initially think. Uh, I do believe that Twitch TV uses IRC as a base for its chat. Uh, I know that you can access Hitbox, uh, Hitbo Hitbox's chat through IRC as well, as well as a whole number of other services. Sometimes it's not uh, clearly evident, sometimes they just use the actual base of IRC, the actual uh, software for setting up the protocol uh, and don't actually allow you to connect to it from your own uh, IRC clients and so forth, but it is very commonly used. In fact, uh, I have heard uh, people say that it's basically the, the foundation for every chat room almost ever created. It usually spawns from that initial kind of protocol code. Uh, but I you know, can't personally verify that. So, um, yeah, IRC has been around for a long time. Its most common use I've seen until recently uh, is mainly used as community support for Linux distributions and pieces of software. Uh, I've also seen it used to discuss particularly geeky subjects, um, maybe things like tech, software development, uh, games, and there's a lot of chat on games on IRC. Uh, I've seen quite a lot of bronies use it. In fact, there is a My Little Pony IRC whole network. Um, so it's, and, and, and to be honest, it has actually seen a slight resurgence in popularity lately. Um, I guess I don't know why, but I have heard it sort of mentioned in the media a bit more. Um, and I don't really know what spurned it. Um, I guess maybe just a resurgence, resurgence in general geek, geek culture that we've seen over the past four or five years anyway. Um, so, is it a social network? Well, um, again, that really highly depends on what your definition of a social network is. Um, and it is very, very difficult to actually pin down what a definition of a social network is. Let's take, say, should we say, the four well-known services for being social networks. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Reddit. I know you can, of course, count things like Instagram and Pinterest and LinkedIn and, and all the other things. But let's focus on the main four because they cover quite a lot of bases there and then. So Facebook, it's the quintessential uh, social network. You have got uh, forums there in the form of groups. You've got pages there in, in the form of um, sort of liking something and connecting with a product or a brand. You've got the instant messaging service, which uses a base of XMPP, which I'll be talking about later. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, but it is very, very interesting. Um, so it covers all of the bases that you might expect for a social network. It does everything. So it's undeniable that Facebook is a social network. It is also, I believe, possibly the first service where the term social network was used, but I'm not 100% certain. It could be MySpace. It's kind of predecessor. I know many of you guys can uh, can remember MySpace. And, um, well, to be honest, considering that MySpace really wasn't that long-lived, I'm actually quite surprised Facebook has lived as long as it has. But there you go. Uh, Twitter, again, is the second uh, most well-known social media platform. I think it's the most seventh most visited website in the world, whereas Facebook is the second. Uh, so, yeah, Twitter being the seventh most commonly visited website ever, you know, well not ever, but like sort of, uh, it, you know, nowadays, the seventh most popular website. Um, it's it's not that far behind Facebook these days. And a lot of people are moving from Facebook to Twitter or using Twitter more because Twitter's a lot more, first of all, it's a lot more simple. You know where you're at. Like Facebook has a lot of bells and whistles. And if you're a big social media nut, then you're gonna make use of those bells and whistles. But Twitter, of course, it's, it's a status update tool and it's very little further in from that. Uh, and a lot of people like that, it's simple. It's got good privacy features as well. The uh, protected tweets function, uh, although I find it personally a little bit limiting because I, I kind of like the idea of 
protected tweets, uh, I also find it a bit limiting that you then can't sort of extend your communication beyond people who are already following you. It's a bit sort of, you're either closed in or you're out there for the world to see. There doesn't seem to be any kind of middle ground. But the simplicity of those two choices is great anyway. Now this, of course, is again, undeniably a social network. People often refer to it as a social network. Um, and really all it is is a status update tool with maybe, I mean, you can kind of count that messenger as a bit of a, a, a I don't know, you know, it's, 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 it's there, it might add to whether or not you define it as a social network or, or whatever. Um, and the two things these have in common are effectively you can use to network with people. So that's, you know, kind of, kind of straightforward. It, it, it works a lot more like that. It's, it's a social tool. Um, so if we move on to Reddit, Reddit is what would commonly be described more traditionally as a forum, uh, but it seems to be the forum of forums. It seems to be this platform where, uh, whereas maybe, you know, five, ten years ago, you would set up your own forum on your own website and, and do that. A lot of people are foregoing that in favour of, of um, subreddits. And um, there are various pros and cons to doing this. Uh, of course, the big cons being that you're taking away control from your own platform and moving it directly to Reddit. The, uh, the big pros, of course, being that um, people can subscribe to Reddit. It's a lot easier to sort of aggregate your content and so forth. But anyway, with Reddit, you, um, it is traditionally a forum, but again, it is very commonly referred to as a social network. Does that mean that all forums by that definition of social networks are social networks? Because if Reddit is a social network, then um, for example, um, you know, is 4chan a social network, which again works in, in a kind of similar way, is, um, it, it, it is like uh, the Ubuntu forums, for example, a social network. I mean, it really is just a support forum for the Ubuntu operating system, but I mean, it works pretty identically to Reddit, uh, not pretty identically, but it works in, in the same fashion, it's still a forum. So. Um, I, you know, in, in my eyes, from a purely technical point of view, if you call Reddit a social network, which I, I don't see how you can't, then surely all forums must be social network. I mean, you connect, you network with people on them, you connect, you share information. Um, it, you know, that seems to be a fundamental theme of what a social network is. Uh, and then we move on to what what is is a little bit more trickier is is Tumblr, which again is referred to as a social network, and I'm very frequently surprised um, that Tumblr is lumped in with other social networks alongside Reddit and 4chan. It, it, often when you hear about some kind of faux controversy which has sparked up, um, usually people refer to Tumblrers, Redditors, and people on 4chan. Um, yeah, so I I can understand like 4chan and Reddit, they're, they're both sort of forum based sites, you can understand how people would talk and communicate and share stuff and whatever on it. Tumblr seems a little bit different because it to me is more strikingly similar to a uh, blogging platform similar to something say WordPress. Um, a little more casual than WordPress, yes, but it still strikes me as being very similar to WordPress, more a blogging platform than a social media platform. Uh, the communication seems to be geared at being one way. You have the content creator who then distributes their content onto the person that wishes to view said content. Uh, it doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem to have that social element to it, yet Tumblr is frequently referred to as a social network. Yeah, you can technically meet new people on Tumblr, but because that conversational um, framework isn't there, or or it certainly isn't there to have real proper conversations. And the closest thing I've, I've seen to people having conversations on Tumblr are effectively um, people quoting each other's posts and then adding to it, um, which is kind of a, almost quite a quaint way of doing it. It's like having a scrapbook and then people, and then passing it around a room of people so they can add their own stuff onto that scrapbook. It's not really, I wouldn't call it social, but it's it's something. So maybe you can lump it in with the other social networks, but it, I certainly wouldn't have it on the same, um, it, it, you know, in, in the same footing as, as maybe like Reddit or 4chan, because it does, again, seems like a way of distributing content in a, in a in, you know, unidirectionally. But again, people refer to Tumblr as a, uh, as a social networking platform and it, you know, as a, as a, as a social media platform. So, um, you know, is it a social media platform only by definition of, of public usage of the word? I don't know. I mean, that seems to, that's what language really is, isn't it? If enough people uh, co-opt a word to mean something, then that word pretty much means something. It's like when uh, the term literally was uh, was co-opted not only to mean um, actually happened or, you know, in actuality, but also to mean with emphasis, 
uh, you know, that, that, that second definition was also co-opted, much to people's chagrin. Um, but anyway, you know, like I say, it's, 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 if, if a word is applied, if a definition is applied to a word enough times by enough people, that becomes the definition of a word, or at least an extra definition of a word. So then again, you know, does that make, if, if, if Tumblr is a social networking platform or a social media platform, does that mean that WordPress is a social media? And you can see, I'm, you know, I can, I can carry on going forever, really, can't I? So, where does IRC come into all of this? Well, it's a social platform in the sense that you can actually socialise with people. In fact, it's a platform designed to socialise with people. Uh, you can make friends, you can communicate with people, but furthermore to that, you can communicate with them in real time. You can have more of a conversation on IRC than you could ever have on something like Tumblr. And, well, I would argue to say, on Twitter and maybe even Reddit as well, because you're having it, that conversation in real time, like a, a you know a traditional chat room, um, and and there are sort of conversational um, and and th there is a pace to conversations that you have in IRC, whereas Reddit again is a forum. You leave a post, you wait for someone else to leave a post, then you leave a reply a post, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and it goes down. So um, IRC is again. It's, you can meet people on it, which I think is, has got to be at least something to do with being a social network. If you can't meet new people, is it really called networking? Um, you know, that, that you know, that's... Um, can you talk to people that at least you already know or that maybe you don't know? Well, yeah, of course you can do that on, on, on IRC. Um, is link sharing, for example, or or sharing content, is that a particularly big aspect of social media and social networking? Well, you, of course, you can do that on IRC. In fact, there are many IRC channels which are dedicated to sharing content. So, um, to be honest, is there any reason why I IRC Internet Relay Chat is not a social media platform, a social networking platform? Um, well, I can't think of one. That's that's effectively it. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. Um, is IRC, is Internet Relay Chat, a um, a social networking platform? You notice that I've been sort of alternating using the term social media and social networking platform simply because both are just commonly used. And I guess in my mind I consider their definitions to be interchangeable. But again, if you consider there to be a difference in, um, in, in what those words mean, then again, feel free to discuss it down in the comment section below. Because, as is a theme with this channel, um, uh, you know, I will often present to you an opinion and I kind of uh, sort of enjoy hearing your thoughts on it as well because again my opinion on just about anything is only worth one person's opinion and one person's opinion is uh, you know it's, it's ultimately just that whereas the opinion of, of the people that watch this video and the reflections of people that watch this video aka you guys um, communally is, is significantly more valuable. So anyway it has come to my belief that IRC is a social network because, or, or you can even argue, of course, um, the, the additional option, it's a collection of social networks. Um, how it works is a server will set up an IRC server um, and then people will join in on that server and they will join particular rooms or channels on that server. So um, when you look at IRC networks, there are hundreds if not thousands of various different um, IRC uh, networks set up with various servers all over the world for all different purposes. Um, and you can argue that each of these separate IRC networks um, and these, these, these IRC servers is in and of itself a social network. Um, again, uh, I, don't, I think that's again a perfectly valid point um, because IRC really, if you want to be kind of technical about it, it's a protocol uh, rather than a platform. Um, you could say that it's a collection of platforms. Again, we're kind of arguing with semantics here. The over sort of ruling um, the query that I'm, I'm proposing to you guys is would you consider it a social network, a social network, a group of social networks, social networking, uh, or would you consider it perhaps something else? Would you consider it uh, a thing in and of itself as well? But again, if you can call Reddit a social networking, you know, a social network, then how can you not call just about every other form of social network? A much smaller one, maybe a niche one, but again, 
And something being a niche social network, something having a niche, doesn't exclude it from being a social network. See LinkedIn. LinkedIn, of course, uh, paints itself as being the Facebook for professionals, the Facebook for people who who make money off the internet or or want to connect with other professionals in their industry. So um, it is a social net. You know, LinkedIn, a social network, which even though is very rarely ever spoken about, it's still remarkably popular. It's in it's. Frequently, it's always pretty much in the top ten of most commonly visited websites. So, um, it's 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 very regularly frequented, even though a lot of people I know don't really use it that often. Um, it's interesting. If you guys are actually do sort of do use LinkedIn, let me know. Let me know if you've actually got gotten any sort of value or use out of it, because I personally never have. That being said, though, um, yeah. So just because something is a um, a, a niche social network doesn't necessarily exclude it from being a social network. A particularly interesting, again, example is rainbow-dot-net, which is a, uh, it can really only be described as Twitter for bronies. It's really quite an interesting website. Uh, I'm not signed up there at the moment, but I often frequent it to see what kind of uh, My Little Pony gossip's going around. And um, and it is, it's very interesting. It's it's Twitter, but for bronies. Um, and, and it can only be described as, as a social network because it works exactly the same as a social network. But, um, but it, again, it's it's highly, it's very, very, very niche. Um, but but actually quite more popular than I actually would have expected it to be. But again, um, what counts uh, as a social network? So um, so again, I can't think of any reason whatsoever why IRC is not a uh, it's not a social network. But again. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. So, part two of this video, why IRC is the best social network. Um, it's certainly something that I've been using a lot more lately, and I will put a link actually down in the description, which I highly encourage you guys to check out, uh, which goes to dftba.net, which is the Nerdfighter IRC server. There's a whole bunch of channels on that server, uh, not server, uh, network. The, uh, the network, the IRC network, is a combination, there's, there's a number of servers which all sort of feed into the IRC network. I'll put a link to the um, dftba.net, the, uh, the Nerdfighters IRC network, which is very, very, um, it's very commonly frequented, it's very, very popular, and um, and there's always conversations going on about all manner of nerdfightery type things. Um, the uh, tech channel is one which I actually hang out on quite a lot. There are some pretty big names in the open source world that hang out there actually as well. Um, and it's interesting actually. Ner Nerdfighters carry some very big heavyweights in the open source community among its ranks and I'm, I was very surprised to, to find that out. Um, from the horse's mouth no less. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely check out the Nerdfighter um, IRC link in the description. I will automatically, it'll be a web IRC so you won't have to install or download anything, it'll just pop up a website and you can um, log in and go. It's, uh, it's, you know, you can you can be up and running in a couple of seconds. Um, and it will also automatically open up a few channels which I tend to hang out on and which I think that the majority of people watching this video will enjoy as well. Um, and I'll also put in the... Um, if you have an IRC client, I'll also put in the information to put into that so that you can hang out on it as well. Okay, so um, why is IRC the best social network? Well, um, I've got a list here. I've got some uh, I've got some notes that I actually made for this. Uh, the first one is that it's basically it's pretty simple and easy to understand. It's important for, for social networks. It's kind of how Twitter got its foot in the door is because it's just... It does one thing, but it does it very, very well. I know a lot of people complain that Twitter's only 140 characters. I actually kind of like that. Um, I like it because it, it forces people to be brief. It forces brevity upon us. And in a world where it's not uncommon for people to leave... Well, I was going to say short essays in the comment section of my videos. Sometimes they're pretty lengthy ones as well. Um, and uh, I, I, I do appreciate the brevity that often comes about on Twitter. Um, because it's simple and straightforward. And IRC shares a lot of these qualities. Even though the character limit is a lot more generous on um, IRC updates, um, it encourages a culture of brevity in its very nature, which I kind of like as well. Um, but again, it's overall more simple. Um, and that leads kind of on to point number two, so I'll include that as effectively in this point number one, which is that you don't actually need to sign up for it, which I actually consider to be pretty useful, a, a big plus. And the reason I consider it to be a big plus is because people can try it out and they don't have to lock themselves into anything. They don't have to hand over details that they might not be comfortable doing. Um, you can just get it, you know, you can just hop in and go. You can not use it for a couple of months, then you can hop back in and carry on using it. It's, you know, it's completely 
uh, you know, you're in the driving seat no, no matter whether or not you're a casual user or a regular user. It also has provisions that you can actually reserve your nickname so other people can't use it as well. That's um, particularly useful. Um, so yeah, it's, it's simple, it's straightforward. You just put your name in, you click log in, you click sign, no you don't, you click, you click go in the, the, the button. There's only one button, I can't even remember what's written on it. Yeah, but you type, you type what name you want to be known in as, you click log in, and then bang, you're in the middle of the action. You start talking, you start meeting people. It's as simple as that really. Um, a lot of clients, a lot of um, interfaces nowadays are, are about as straightforward as you can get. If you know how a chat, w chat room works, you know how IRC works. The protocol, the etiquette, everything's already been established in internet culture as well. So again, simple, straightforward. IRC does one thing and it does it damn well. I mean, it's been around since 1980. 1988, that's as old. I was born in 1988, 26 years old, 26 years old, 20 freaking six years old. It's long, it's, 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 I mean, the World Wide Web was brought about in, in 1990. So it preceded, you know, it preceded that. That's, that's a thing, man. And if you don't believe me, because I, I like it, I had a double take when I found that fact out. Wikipedia, it's on Wikipedia. Okay, anyway, so it's simple, you know, it's, it's simple, it's straightforward, you can go. Um, number two is you can actually walk away from it. Bit of an interesting point, and one that I'm gonna have to explain, but it doesn't follow you around the internet in the same way that um, Facebook or Twitter or even YouTube and, and the comment section of YouTube might. If I want to, say, watch a set of YouTube videos and just put my feet up and relax for a couple of hours, I can still see that little counter going on, comment coming in, comment coming in, comment coming in, it's bothering me. Flicks up on my phone, flicks up on my phone, flicks up on my phone, every time someone leaves a comment on a YouTube video, every time someone replies to something on Twitter, you know, on your phone, on your phone, on your phone. Um, I'm not on Facebook anymore, um, which again is, is kind of unusual for someone who's fascinated in social networking as I am, but um, yeah, like it doesn't follow you around. Once you close your IRC uh, window, whether or not it's a tab in your browser, whether or not it's you know it's, it's your desktop client or whatever, you can sort of walk away from it. No one, uh, part of it's within the culture of IRC and part of it is just in it, in its structure, but because um, of course you can idle in IRC and whatever, but you can effectively walk away from it. Like it, people don't mind, like you you know you can either excuse yourself from the room or just like close the window or whatever, and you can walk away and people will will sort of understand. People won't. Um, you know, it, nothing will be sort of hung over your head. Nothing will be, because it works in real time and because it, it, it um, be, yeah, just because of the nature, the culture, the technical specificity, the technical sort of ramifications of it all, uh, not ramifications, the sort of the structure of it, the technical structure, um, it means you can sort of show up, have a bit of a chat and then leave. It works almost like, like going to the pub in a way. It's the equivalent of going to the pub, going, hanging out at a coffee shop or whatever. Um, it, it is that you go into the room, you have a chat with whoever's there, then you leave. That kind of, that kind of structure, which is great. Because if, um, if on Twitter, um, you know, you put up a status or you do something and then, and then you sort of walk away from it and you come back and you realise that there's a whole bunch of replies from your Twitter status, which means that you can often end up having conversations that last over a period of days. On YouTube comment section, on the YouTube comment section of even this channel, I've often had conversations that, that take place over the course of months because, you know, I'll put up a video and then someone watch that video a couple of months later and then they'll leave a comment and then I kind of will feel that because they may made a, a point worthy of, of, of discussion I will then discuss with it but then that will often leave me having a conversation about something whether or not it's a Linux distribution a piece of software or a, a political point that I've made I will often find coming back to that point time and time and time again and sometimes that can actually be quite tiring but because some people are perhaps raising good points um, you know it, it's, it's something that's actually kind of very difficult to walk away from so I see the culture of it is, 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 it gives you the ability to actually just close it down and walk away, which is something that we, I think we kind of need to do with social networks anyway. Um, and, and I think that we do let social networks follow us around a little bit too much. And I like that IRC doesn't push that on you. Um, and I think that, that, that again sums up a lot of what I like about IRC is it doesn't push anything on you. It's there as a tool. It's there to be used for what you need to use it for. And, um, and, and when, when you don't need to use it, you can put it away. Okay, so next point here is that it's more private. This comes with a good number of asterisks after it because it depends what IRC network you are on. For example, Freenode, which is, I believe it's the most 
commonly used one, but I could very well be wrong there. Uh, they log, um, I believe, all their chats, or at least a lot of a lot of the the channels have logged chats, which means that whenever someone says something, it's like it's logged in a save file somewhere. It also means that, uh, and also anyone who's in on the chat can also save the contents of, you know, save what's been said in that chat while they've been there or while they've been sort of idling there. Um, so when you speak in, in IRC, 99 times out of 100, it, it is to be treated in the same way that you might treat a public tweet or, or you know, like consider it public because whatever you say could and probably will be used against you whenever it suits someone else's agenda. But um, if you go to, say, smaller servers um, or servers that you trust or smaller channels, um, you can kind of have a, with with people that you know and trust on that basis. Um, then you could you, you know then you have uh, significantly more privacy. The privacy is basically dictated by who you're having the conversation with, rather than the um, than the company or the service or the platform that you're using. For example, whether or not uh, Facebook will um, will save all your tweets or whatever. Uh, save why would face, Facebook save all your tweets? So, you know whether or not Facebook saves all your statuses and locks them away somewhere or whatever. Um, you know it, it you have a a lot more. I was going to say you have a lot more control. You you have a lot more control insofar as you can choose uh, to use IRC in a way that makes it more private. Um, you can also uh, in IRC. Um, it's again it's within the, the the culture of the platform that people don't tend to use their real names. In fact, I think I'm the only person in the world who or <laughs> it seems like I'm the only person in the world who actually uses their real name for IRC. And I do that because um, I kind of. It's in my nature to be open. It's in my nature to be some, some, you know, to some degree public. And I like the idea that that people can sort of catch up with me if they know me from somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of more private. It's it's certainly like can be used for anonymous stuff. Um, if you want to, if you if you know, if you want to sort of hide your identity, use a different identity, whatever. It's it certainly doesn't push that Google Plus rubbish on you where you have to use your real name. So um, it's it's more private. But again, there, there are quite a few asterisks on this. Open source, it's open source, or well, it's it's an open platform. It's a platform that uses open source software. It's um, it, it's an open protocol. So there are a few benefits to it being open source, and that kind of links in with what I say about it following following you around the internet is that it doesn't, it's because it doesn't have to. Because IRC in and of itself isn't a profit-making um, or institution or organisation, uh, it means that it has. It doesn't care if you use it or not, which means that you, can only, you only use it when you want to use it, and if you don't want to use it, you don't use it. Whereas something like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, anything Google-related, anything that's run by a professional social media company, it's in their interest that you spend as much time on their site as possible. One of the big things about SEO on um, YouTube videos, and I use that as an example because I know it quite well, is that the long is that one of the or the two biggest aspects, or part of the two biggest aspects um, of YouTube uh, videos and how well they rank in search engines is uh, first how much of or how long people spend watching a video, and that's actually done, believe it or not, in absolute time, not in a percentage of the time as I initially thought. Which means if I put out a half an hour video like this, um, it means that um, uh, it, even if, if the majority of people only watch the first 10 minutes and get bored, um, that's a higher average than say someone that puts out a four minute video. So um, uh, so longer videos in some ways actually do, uh, and if you do, if you look at my channel, you'll notice that the most popular videos are actually the longer videos, um, which are, is actually initially a little bit confusing. But when you start sort of working out, well, yeah, that's because it sort of raises the average and yada yada, you know, it means people are actually on the site longer, which means people are absorbing more advertising, people are getting used to being on YouTube longer, yada yada yada. The second big thing about social, um, not social, but uh, SEO, search engine optimization around YouTube videos, is how long people spend on the site when they've watched your videos. So if people watch a video of mine, be it a short or long one, and then they carry on to watch a whole bunch of other videos and spend a good number of hours on YouTube just going from video to video, that will reflect well on me because it means that I've done something to make people stay on YouTube. Every video that they watch on that site on YouTube um, during this extended session that they might you know, be enjoying, um, that will benefit to them. There, there will possibly be a, um, not necessarily a negative effect, or, but, but a reduced effect on the video that actually causes someone to actually log off of YouTube, because that video, possibly in one way or another, might have prompted someone to actually stop watching videos on YouTube. Um, 
and again, this isn't like this. Like one person doing any of this is, is kind of irrelevant. It's, it's it's whether or not it, it's multiplied. So if a thousand people, for example, stop watching, uh, stop visiting, stop being on the YouTube website after watching this one video, this video will be ranked very poorly because it, it basically goes back to uh, YouTube advertisers just not getting revenue out of this particular video. So videos that make the you know effectively they make the most money for YouTube as a whole, albeit by spending putting people on the youtube.com website for as long as possible um will benefit the videos will benefit as a result of that um and hence why in youtube and again this applies to all the other social um, network uh platforms um is 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 because it's in their interest to raise money usually through advertising it's in their interest to make you stay on the website for as long as possible and hence follow you around the internet either with apps on your phone or notification updates or embedding it into some kind of artificial social media platform that no one really ever asked for and is just being foisted upon us anyway thank you very much google plus no irc is open source which and it's non-profit and um and i guess those are actually kind of two separate points but they're often linked together open source doesn't necessarily mean non-profit for example in the case of wordpress wordpress is a for-profit open source uh institution i believe um, but yeah, it's non-profit, it's open source, which means that there is no incentive to make you do something that you wouldn't otherwise do just to get to use your platform. Do whatever the hell you want. Um, and I think that is, that is the final list of, um, that's the list. Um, so yeah, like because of all of those reasons why IRC seems to excel in all of them, and I, I am aware that I've actually been spending most of my time talking about other social networks rather than IRC, but I guess social networks can really only ever compete in an environment of other social networks. Um, that is effectively why I think IRC is, is the best social network out there and why it is a social network is because, again, you don't have to sign up to it. It's simple. It knows what it's doing and it does that, you know, that one thing particularly well. You can walk away from it. It doesn't follow you around the internet. Uh, it oper Oh, I'd left out one. Um, I think it operates in real time in, in the way that you have like conversational updates. I know I've covered it in sort of other points, so I guess that's why I glossed over it. Um, but again, you can actually have sort of one to, well, not one to one conversation, but you can actually have group conversations almost similar to what you might have in, say, a trip down the pub or the coffee shop, um, which I think is particularly, it, it, it's a bonus because it, it effectively means that you're not constantly waiting for someone to update a status here or a post there or whatever. And it is a bit more conversational, which I think is, again, more social, which kind of makes it a bit nicer. Um, it's more private if you use it the right way. It's certainly more anonymous um, if you, choose, again, choose to use it that way. Um, and it's open source and non-for-profit, which means that there is no profit motive for making you use social media in a way which you wouldn't otherwise use it. Bearing in mind, all for-profit social media networks do encourage you to act in a way that you wouldn't otherwise act so that they can make more money. There's a little bit of food for thought there. Now, this camera is running out of battery, so I'm going to have to draw it to a close, but I would very much like your opinion on this because I do kind of feel that I've said a few things worthy of discussion. Namely, is IRC a social networking platform? And, um, again, and what do you think is the best social networking platform? Please let me know down in the comments section below, um, just to see, you know, so I'm always interested in, in how people sort of connect with the internet. Um, and like I say, I'll put some links to some of the IRC, the Nerdfighter IRC and some of the channels on that IRC, which I regularly frequent. If you ever want to catch up with me, I'm in on there for like most of the day. I usually have like a, an IRC window in the background of whatever work I'm doing. And, um, and uh, yeah, whenever a pretty interesting conversation comes up, I usually kind of chip in and join in. Um, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, that's about it for me. Yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.